come to this presentation uh, about F sharp. Uh, my name is Markus. I'm going by the handle GIMF in the Werner mailing lists. And I want to give you a short introduction um, on F sharp, on the language, how it looks like, and a few of the special points of F sharp. And, oh, okay, it works. Um, why F sharp at all? Um, why did I start? I am a .NET developer uh, by profession and I had uh, some problem with C-sharp. It means you have to type all the names of the classes and types all the time. And this is especially not very convenient when you start writing asynchronous code where you are using the task uh, uh, mm -hmm. parallel library which is always a generic type and then you return a generic type like a list and yeah so you start typing things all over again and I disliked it. Also I like uh, I, I like very long names to this and that and abbreviations are out for the very simple reason that I like code to be readable and now if somebody does not like to type that much and does not want to abbreviate anything then when well, you get uh, slightly in a conflict. The next thing why I did a chart because, well, as I said at the beginning, I am a .NET developer. Um, .NET is a platform, this is, um, well, fixed. And so the options are limited to languages that can be compiled to .NET. Now, so, what is one of the first things uh, that come to mind uh, when you try to type less and still have readable variable names. Um, we know that there are more concise and less concise programming languages. Um, basically, you want a type system that helps you where it is possible. And you want to be that functional composition, so comp uh, composing of functions out of each other is simple, with little typing. Not like in Java. In Java, everything can be composed if you write an interface and then write an abstract class and then write the class and then write a factory and then write the proxy and that's not the way to do it. Um, the good part is F sharp um, has, has this possibility that you can um, do this. Now what will I talk about? So why might you be interested? Because those were my reasons. And also what you can expect at the end of the talk. Um, and at the end, uh, and then comes the main part, I will talk about the language characteristics, uh, always uh, show them with examples. Because I do not have a laptop myself, I won't do any live typing, um, which has the nice advantage that well, the examples are prepared, and the disadvantage that if you want to go into some detail and sh show, you know, live compile errors or something like that, then we have to do it um, Afterwards, if somebody has installed the shop already, so okay. Um, so we will go only by the slides. Yeah, and what will I show you? I will show you about programming styles that sharp support. So we will show you how the types and the type system works. Uh, type providers? No, I won't show you. That that's not correct. I, I, you will you will see them, but we won't have the time to go into details and computation expressions. Uh, we will also see them um, in other programming languages that are known as monads. Uh, if you use Haskell, for instance, then and you know the do notation in Haskell, then you will uh, feel at home with computation expressions in F sharp. So, the teaser. Um, just so that you get the first idea of how F sharp code could look like, theoretically. Um, this uses qu uh, quite a few features of F sharp already, and it should not intimidate you. At the end, you should under understand everything here. Um, one, uh, that's the wrong button. This, yeah. yeah. Okay. World Bank, World Bank data provider. Um, what is this? This is um, quite a nice library which um, can connect to the online service of the World Bank and which downloads the schema of the data that is there um, at compile time, by the way and then generates the types that uh, represent the schema so that you have static types throughout everything and then you can 
Then we have the static type, which has um, all this data schema in F sharp types, and you can say get the data context, and then you can download, filter, and search all this data. And yes, this really does at compile time look up an online service and generate types, which is quite cool. Um, so this is, for instance, an example why many people say, okay, F sharp is especially interesting if you're into statistics, if you're into data analysis. This is also the reason why we have data providers for R. The R scripting language or R statistical computing language, you may know, uh, which is quite often used in data analysis. Um, F sharp provides a data provider so that it can plug into the R virtual machine and then can exchange data between R and F sharp. And the idea would be that you know, data analysis in R there exists so already many libraries. F sharp is a real full scale programming language with all the um, libraries of .NET. And so you can bring them together through these data providers. And of course, F sharp is as a functional oriented programming language quite uh, suitable for data analysis itself. Well, this is not a data analysis, it's just 10 lines long. But uh, well, what would this do here? Okay, we look up for all the countries uh, which, do, which do not have an empty list of this data here. Ah, yeah, by the way, F sharp can of course use variable names and type names which have spaces in them and Unicode and whatever. And um, yeah, okay, this by the way means this physician uh, per 1000 people um, is actually a property name, like you would, um, for instance, if you have an array, you have the property dot length, which uh, is the number of uh, items in the array. And here we have a property which is uh, physicians in, well, with all this stuff. And this is a list. And so because it is a list, we can check if this is not empty. Okay. And then we just say max by indicators physicians, max by second, uh, why this? Um, because there's always a year and then the data. And so what we get out of here is, I think I forgot to, to put that into the slide, we get out of here the country which has uh, had the most physicians per uh, 1,000 people within the time where this data has been collected. And the battery is going out, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you... Uh, Go a bit in depth about the syntax. Uh, we will uh, have a <laughs> look into the syntax, of course, um, but not here. But a few slides later. I hope the battery. Do we have? Uh, yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> uh, by the way, it's Cuba. Did I already say that? Yeah. Uh, Cuba had some uh, sometimes. Uh, at some point, Cuba had more than twice uh, physicians per its uh, population than Austria today. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is why um, Dr. House said in the series, yeah, well, if they know one thing, then it's how to educate doctors. So, now, why might you be interested besides all that cool uh, type provider stuff? Um, if you work on .NET or Mono, then F sharp is definitely one of the coolest languages available. You have C sharp, you have Visual Basic, you have Iron Python and Iron Ruby, who are half maintained, developed, but slow. And well, you have F sharp. Then there are a few other um, functional languages available for .NET. Clojure, but Clojure is not yet fully ported to .NET. It's not ready. And there is another language which I just forgot the name about, which is um, quite similar, but uh, well, it lacks some of the tooling, uh, of the support in Visual Studio and so on. And well, F Sharp gives you more or less the same performance on .NET that you could get with C Sharp, but with a much more convenient syntax. Um, well, and as I said at the beginning, if you are using R and need some heavy lifting, or you just would like to learn functional programming and use it in your job and pay for it, of course. Um, then it's also a great language because, well, um, Java is so bad that people are used to use other languages on Java, like JRuby, like Kyoja, like Scala. Um, 
but um, .NET actually um, many people still use what comes to Visual Studio and uh, therefore are not quite um, used how to make a workflow uh, where other languages are used within your build chain, within your tool, tool chain. Now the good part is if you work in a company which uses .NET um, you probably use Visual Studio and F Sharp is a first class citizen on Visual Studio so you get uh, full support, it's developed by Microsoft and that's convenient. Yeah. So, of course I know that all the PR members um, well, neither work on .NET nor no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have Haskell then you use Haskell of course. <laughs> yeah. 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 Also or Erlang. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget about the other. Um, yeah, and actually the uh, preconditions you should map before uh, we continue are quite simple. You should have some programming experience, so you understand how to write a program. Um, and you should know that functional programming exists. Um, you do not need really already need to understand functional programming. Uh, because I will explain the basics when I have to explain the syntax anyways because I cannot show, show occurring without showing the syntax and not when I show the syntax, well, you will see what it does. Um, yeah, and at the end, you know how it looks like. You will probably be read to, write, uh, to uh, be able to read most of the f -sharp code that is around there. We cannot do everything today. Uh, many of the advanced topics, we only well, have a look at it and we see that they, they exist, but that's it mostly, but it should uh, surface for most part. And if you are one of those who um, use .NET and the company, you should uh, at the end have an idea if it's um, really um, interesting enough to um, learn more about it. Now, five minute syntax. I promise you that in five minutes, uh, about 300 seconds will be over, and, but we will continue beyond Hello World. Hello world. Well, it it's really that. It, it's it's nothing more. It's printfn hello world. Uh, printfn is uh, the name of a function. Um, this n there is a printf function which does not end with a new line. A printfn which automatically appends a new line. And hello world. You see this string is um, well like in almost all other programming languages. And well, you also see there is no semicolon at the end. There is no opening parenthesis. Um, F sharp is, um, well, that one, uh, it is somehow quite um, easy on the special characters because you do not need braces, something like that. But you will soon see that there are more and more operators which then clutter up the code a little bit. Uh, but basically, if you want to write a simple, readable F sharp, you can go by with a minimum amount of um, special characters. Um, now, this printfn and this variable. Okay, let, let's introduce a variable. Let greet t world. Okay, um, this uh, makes a variable of type string, of course. And this uh, percent %s really works like you would expect. There's percent %s, there's percent %d. Uh, like in C, in the printf function, and um, there is also this uh, percent uh, uppercase A, which is great because it means just print the object, and whatever object, and it's great for debugging. Especially, I totally forget to put this in slides. F sharp does have an interactive mode, like a uh, REPL on Lisp, like uh, the Python shell. On F sharp, you have F sharp interactive. So you really can sit there and type stuff or within Visual Studio you mark some code and press um, Alt plus Enter and then it's sent to the interactive window. And well, this means you can get code easily into an interactive session to try it out. And this of course means that quite often you want to look at the data structures without going into the debugger and so uh, things and then you can um, just print with percent uppercase A and you see the content. So you actually have some kind of class-based object orientation and can overload, for example, a two-string method or something like this? Yes. Okay. A sharp is still .NET. Okay. It compiles to IL, intermediate language, which is .NET. And therefore, ex um, the type system is the .NET type system. 
um, is only on the language level, on the compiler 